Hello, it's Carly McAvoy. I'm going to take you quickly through multiplying polynomials. Maybe you've done this before. When you multiply a polynomial that's a monomial times a binomial or any other size, you just multiply by distributing your binomial through there. So we multiply the number parts. 3 times 4 is 12. And then we add the powers. So x to the second and x to the fifth is x to the seventh. Remember, you can only add and subtract like terms, but that's not true for multiplying and dividing. Only like terms are important for addition and subtraction. All right, and then I'm going to multiply this. I got 3 times negative 5 or negative 15, and I have the x to the second power. In the second one, I have a binomial times a binomial. And in that case, I'm going to tell you that I would recommend using the FOIL method. That's something you probably remember from before. That stands for first, outside, inside, and last, or outer, inner, however you want to say it. But what are the four things then? First, I have um, my firsts are x times x. That's going to be x squared. My outside, that's first. My outside is x times 3. That's going to be 3x, and I'm aware of the signs as I go. My inside, negative 5 times x. That's inside. That's negative 5x. And my last are negative 5 times 3, which is my last, which is negative 15. Then I want to combine like terms if I can, and I can here, so I'm going to say x squared minus 2x minus 15. So notice I don't need like terms to multiply, but I do need like terms to add. That's as far as I can go. Using the FOIL method here, I'm going to do first 2x times x. This is like first power, right? So I'm adding 1 plus 1 to get 2x to the second power. My outside, 2x times negative 4, negative 8x. My inside, 1 times x is x. And my last, positive 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Now I'm going to combine my inside and outside terms because they are like terms. So my final answer, 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. Notice this is now a second degree polynomial. I can't combine these because this is a second degree, this is a first degree, that's a zero degree, though none of them have the same degree, so I can't go any further. When you have something like this, this is called a binomial squared. You have a binomial times itself. You have a couple of choices. One is you can rewrite it and use the FOIL. If that works for you and you want to do that, it's never going to really hurt you to be able to just to do it that way. So we have 3y times 3y is 9y to the second. Remember, you're adding those powers. And then we have 3y for the outside. And then we have 3y for the inside, 1 times 3y. And then 1 times 1 is our last, which is 1. And so what does that give you? It gives you 9y squared plus 6y plus 1. But there's also a formula that says when you have a binomial squared, we'll call this a plus b squared. The answer is always going to be a squared. Well, is that true for ours? Our a was 3y. 3y times 3y is 9y squared. Yep, that worked. Plus 2ab. ab means you're going to multiply your first term times your second term, and then you're going to double it. 3y times 1 is 3y. Doubled is 6y. So yes, that makes sense. And then plus 1, because our last one is, whoops, plus b squared, sorry. Our last term was 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. So this is the shortcut formula, or you could FOIL it. It's up to you. So I'll do one of these. This has got a minus sign in the middle. We also have the negatives to worry about. But using this formula, what is a squared going to be? Remember, it's the first term times itself. So for us, it'd be negative 3p times negative 3p. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and p times p is p squared. So that's our first one. Then we're going to multiply our two terms together and then double it. So we have negative 3p times negative 5. That's positive 15p, but then double it. That gives us positive 30p. And finally, b squared. That's going to be our second term squared. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. So you could also, again, do this.
write it out and foil it. What you cannot do is just square the first term and square the second term. That's a common mistake and it's a big no-no. You'll always get the wrong answer doing that because we have to remember those inside and outside terms. But what happens with the inside term here, negative 5 times negative 3, that's 15p. What happens with the outside, negative 3 times negative 5, that's another 15p. That is our, that's how we get the 30 in the middle because we're going to get the same thing twice. So either way you do it, you're going to get this answer. Feel free to use the shortcut or use the FOIL method, whichever one works for you. Okay, number seven, we have something where we have a monomial times a trinomial. No great shortcuts here. We just have to do all this out. So I'm going to have to take x times x squared. That's x to the third. x times negative 4x. That's negative 4x squared and x times negative 9, that's negative 9x. Then I'm going to go back and do the same multiplications with the 4 instead of the x. So 4 times x squared. Notice I'm writing my like terms one under the other. It makes it easier, so I'm just going to do that. 4 times negative 4 and 4 times negative 9. I have a little breakdown on what that was for a second. Okay. So now I'm going to add these together. Do you see how the negative 4x squared and the positive 4x squared are going away? That's gone. I'm going to get x to the third, and then I'm going to get negative 25x. That is adding my x's together, minus 36. So I multiplied the first term times everything, then the second term times everything, and then I combine my like terms. That's how I'm going to do that one. And finally, I have two left. And these two are a little different. Notice on these, it's a you could FOIL it, and that would be totally fine. But what I want you to recognize is that they're the same terms, one with the plus and one with the minus. What happens when you do that with FOIL? You're going to get 9x, and then here, for the inside and outside, you're going to get negative 9x. And negative 9x and positive 9x are going to go away. So what you're going to end up with is x squared plus 9x minus 9x, which is 0. And then 9 times 9 is 81, but 1's a plus and 1's a minus, so negative 81. So when you're doing it, what we call a product of a sum and a difference, that is we have a plus b and a minus b, what you're going to end up with is a squared minus b squared because those middle terms drop out. Notice this is not a product of a difference and a sum because this one has both subtractions and this one had both additions up there. When you have one of each is when you can use this shortcut. So people abuse this shortcut because they don't realize sometimes they think they have this shortcut when they don't. So what happens here is what's going to be our first term squared? 2x times 2x is going to be 4x squared. And what's our last term squared? 1 times 1 is 1. Remember, it's always a minus, so it's minus 1. If you don't remember that, then FOIL it. What you're going to get here is 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. And then you're going to get negative 2x from the outside and positive 2x from the inside and then negative 1. And what's going to happen is these two terms, the minus 2x and positive 2x, drop out leaving you 4x squared minus 1. All right, that's everything you need to know about multiplication. Have a great day.